today's video. If this is the first time that you're seeing me, I'm the Hermit Tarot and this is my YouTube channel. I do a lot of different stuff on this channel. I haven't done a lot of different stuff in a while though. So today's video is following suit of the most recent videos. We're doing a tarot pick a card reading. Before we get into that, I hope you guys had a wonderful Halloween. I hope October wrapped itself up neatly for you. Mine actually did. I was very shocked. Um, a lot of old cycles ended as Scorpio season began. Whether you celebrate um, Halloween or Samhain, whatever it is, I hope you had a wonderful time. To be honest with you, I overindulged. I ate a lot of chocolate to the point where I got a pimple down here, a hormone pimple. I don't get them unless I like eat a lot of chocolate on that part of my mouth. They always like break out. So <laughs> it's, oh well, life is about experiences, isn't it? <laughs> no regrets. The caramel chocolate was amazing. Anyway, welcome to today's reading. We're doing a pick a group reading. As I mentioned, the topic of today's reading will be why is this person on your mind slash why have you been thinking about them slash what the heck is going on universe. Today's reading is set out in a way where I just want to bring you more information about your thoughts as well as what spirit is trying to tell you through your thoughts. There's going to be an extended reading as well. Um, before I talk about that, I'll just quickly say that this reading did take a lot more energy than I was expecting. Scorpio season hit me hard, y'all. I closed out um, some pretty major emotional cycles in my own world, and that had, did take a toll on the quality of readings that I was able to give you. So instead of pushing myself and compromising the quality and doing four groups, I just stuck to three groups today. Um, I always, I've talked about this before, I always honor my intuition over everything, and my intuition has been screaming at me to take a break so I am after this reading I'm not going to resurface until I announce the giveaway winner I'm just going to take some time off to recharge and to really get back to where I am happy with using my gift again so um, Sunday is when I will be announcing the giveaway winner and if you haven't entered already, make sure you do. The entry post is in the community section of my YouTube channel. It's also on my Instagram. It's only like very easy. It should only take you 30 seconds to enter. Very easy. And the giveaway pack includes a whole bunch of merch that I've been sitting on for way too long. It's actually a relief to be able to share it with you. I've been using that water bottle for months now. Every time I go on an adventure with the Twitch chat, I'm always taking that water bottle with me. So I've had it for way too long. And the one that you're getting is brand new. It hasn't been used, okay? <laughs> Um, so yeah, make sure you enter. There'll be more giveaways to be a part of as well, though. So coming back to today's reading, what you can expect in your group reading will be clear messages as to why this person is on your mind, why have you been thinking about them, we'll be dissecting your thoughts and the root of them, as well as how you can move through and use that information or your thinking pattern to get to where you want to be. I'm going to be asking Spirit if this person is thinking about you as well and what their thoughts have been about you. And then we're also going to be asking Spirit for channeled messages from this person. The channeled messages were actually a lot more helpful than I realized. I wasn't going to do them for each of the groups. I thought I would just do them if they were only helpful and if it if I thought it was going to actually give you closure or peace and for some reason it worked for all the groups so every group has channeled messages from their person and will be closing your reading with advice from spirit as well there will be an extended reading for each of the three groups the extended reading links are in the description box below if you um, would like to be a part of the extended readings um, the extended of readings contain information about what the future of your connection will be. We'll be getting more channeled messages and more advice from spirit for each of the three groups as well. As always, the channeled messages, excuse me, the future extended readings, I got there eventually, the extended readings are tailored towards each individual group. So just watch your reading first and if I add anything to it, I will tell you at the end of your reading what you can expect in the extended as well. I think that's all from me. I feel like I've talked a lot, um, so I'm going to leave it there and I'll take you into the pick a group portion now where you can choose a group and join me in your reading.
Welcome to the pick a group portion of today's reading. For this portion, we have three different groups to choose from. As I mentioned in the intro, y'all, I not only ran out of time, but I ran out of intuition. I need to spend this weekend to just recharge, connect with loved ones, connect with nature, and get my intuition back to where I am happy to use it again. I don't want to put anything out where I'm not 100% confident in the messages. So I could only do three groups today, but I didn't want to compromise the quality by adding more quantity. So really take time today to meditate, to connect, and to really select a group that resonates. Um, you can join me in the meditation portion if that helps, or you could just try a few different methods of your own to really find which of these three groups you're feeling most called to. We have three different decks to choose from. We have Ace of Swords in each of these decks to help you get a feel for what the deck looks like and to hopefully feel connected to one of them in particular. Starting with group one over here, the deck that you guys will have will be the Hermetic Tarot deck by Godfrey Dowson. This deck has a lot of esoteric meanings and interpretations slash symbolism. It is a very informative deck and I love to use it. The Ace of Swords card is here to help you understand what you can expect with the deck. Maybe there's images or symbolism on this card that will help you figure out if this is your group. Group one over here. Group two, you will have the Lightseers Tarot deck over here. The Lightseers Tarot deck looks like this on the back. And the Ace of Swords in this deck is very artistic. It's like a modern art deck, really. Beautiful deck. A lot of people love this deck. It's by Chris Ann, excuse me, who has very interesting interpretations through the artwork in this deck as well. So that's what the Ace of Swords looks like in this deck. Group three, you will have the True Black Tarot deck by True Black. I'm not too sure who the actual... Um, author is but it has these sort of embossed um, little designs I guess this, this embossed design editions I don't know I'm trying to like overcomplicate something so simple but you can see that it kind of glows in certain light so that is what this deck looks like in terms of the back on the front we can see the ace of swords here all the decks have the name of the card whether it's an ace or an eight or a nine or a king or a empress it'll have it at the bottom or the top and then it has the artwork as well it's a very dark deck in terms of like the colors but i personally have gravitated to it fairly quickly so i do love using this deck i just don't get to use it enough so group three you will have the true black deck over here so pause the video now if you need more time or join me in the meditation if that's what's helpful for you. When you know which of these three groups you're feeling most called to, scroll down to the timestamps section of today's reading, select your group, and I shall see you there with your messages. So the first thing I want you to do with me is to take in two deep mindful breaths. Breathe in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, and in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Now I want you to focus on clearing your mind. It's natural to have thoughts racing at this point. I want you to embrace each thought as it comes and let it slip as quickly as it came in. Focus on clearing and balancing out these thoughts so that they come and go without a desire to be attached to them. And now, with a rested mind, I want you to think of the first group that comes to your mind. It may be a number. It may be an object that I showed you. It could be a specific color could be a feeling that you felt when I showed you each of the groups today. When you are ready and when you feel confident, select your group and join me in your reading. Hi group one and welcome to your reading. If you chose the Hermetic Tarot deck for the 
pick a group portion of today's reading, then this is going to be your reading. We're asking Spirit, why are they on your mind? I'm hoping that this reading will help you understand the situation better, will give you more clarity, and will also just give you more information so that you can move forward, whatever moving forward means for you. So let's have a look, shall we? We're going to get tarot, we'll get some oracle cards for advice, and we'll just see where the reading takes us. You're kind of like my... my um little tester group. I haven't really pigeonholed this yet. We're just going to see where your reading takes us. Group one, please, spirit. Why is this person on group one's mind? Why is this person on group one's mind? We have the seven of pentacles coming out reversed. Why is this person on group one's mind, spirit? We have the Five of Cups coming up reversed. Why is... We have the Moon showing itself to us. Why is this person on Group One's mind? We have the Four of Wands coming out reversed. And I'll see if I can just get a clarifying row as well, please, Spirit. Let me clarify these cards, starting with the Seven of Pentacles. We have the King of Swords. Why is this person on group one's mind? We have the six of swords. Why is this person on group one's mind, spirit? Clarifying the moon, we have the foolish man. And last card, four of wands, please, spirit. The Emperor coming out for you. Interesting. Your bottom deck energy here will be the Three of Swords in the upright position. So honestly, this feels like a breakup or at least a very messy separation in which it was hard for you to get the emotional closure that you needed. It feels like the situation caused you to really analyze and overthink this and try to understand if this was the right thing, if this was the best thing. For some of you, you may have been the one that walked away from this connection, or you may be the one who feels like they still had more to give, as though their actions were left unfulfilled, and more could have been fed into this had there been the opportunity. But it also feels like the main reason that they're on your mind is because you consider whether things ended the way that they should have or whether things should have been propagated further is what I feel. Like you wonder whether you could have done more, tried more, given more time. It feels like this is someone who you feel the situation was unfair and you try to think about ways that the situation could be fairer. I do have a feeling that this is on your mind because new information may have come in, or you may be at a point where you were thinking about this person in a way where could anything else have been done? Like, it kind of feels like there's still a bit of emotional pain here, to be honest, um, but more so, you're just trying to understand the situation, like what is the lesson? Why did it have to happen in that way? Why did this relationship forge itself in that way? However significant or insignificant this relationship is in your life, it still feels like you are looking at this as why. Why did it have to happen like this? How do we move forward? What is, what is the way forward? What do we do here? It feels like there is an unsatisfied um, feeling with this person as though there's an itch that wasn't scratched and that's what was mostly on your mind there's a itch that wasn't scratched with them had you just had more time or had you had the chance to offer more of your resources maybe that itch could have been scratched is what it feels like now i also can sense that you are reaching a new point in your healing journey in which these feelings had to resurface and these thoughts had to resurface in order for you to actually move forward. I can see here that for many of you group one, you're about to forge new interests in terms of your mind is going to be invested in new ideas and you're going to balance out into a state of peace. And in order to get there, you do have to navigate those tricky waters first. So this person that feels 
was on your mind very strongly in the last coming weeks, but you may have been able to find more peace through this process. The goal was to get you to a place where you feel hopeful about your future. That was always the goal. You weren't supposed to dwell in these heavy feelings. They weren't supposed to hold you back. They were supposed to, if anything, propel you forward, group one. And I can also see over here with the moon and the foolish man, honestly, this thing seems to come in cycles with you. I don't know if it's just this person and the nature of their relationship in your life or whether it's just you and your moods as well, but it comes in cycles and it feels like you were going through a heavy reflective period where you needed to make heads meet in the sense of you just wanted clarity, you were feeling emotionally confused, maybe a bit emotionally down and you just needed to kind of um, what's the word I like to use? Purge. Purge those heavy subconscious feelings that had been carried with you for some time. And one of them was thoughts and feelings towards this person. And it feels like this was supposed to be a very cathartic process in which you really purge and, and let this out in order to be prepared and ready for a new beginning. It feels like there was more wisdom and information to gain through this process, and it was always supposed to be something that was going to propel you forward, if that makes sense. But you couldn't move forward with this um, attachment or this emotional heaviness because you had to be baggage free in order for this new experience. So thinking about this person helped you tie up those loose ends and is supposed to help you be prepared for what is to come as well. I can see with the Four of Wands reversed and the Emperor upright, you're someone who is actually supposed to be very kind of assertive, or at least you're supposed to have a level of control over your life. And it's not that you're supposed to be like this all the time, but I think that thinking of this person almost made you into them if that makes sense. Like you might have looked at them and wanted them to be the person that you are now becoming in your life. It feels like you became the hero of your own story here instead of being the damsel in distress figuratively. It feels like you had to push yourself out of the comfort zone and you weren't gonna be rescued, so you rescued yourself, group one. The other reason why this is here is that I think that you've been receiving sort of little shocks in your life, like little little stir-ups with the Four of Wands reverse. Maybe like that security is starting to feel like it's shifting and it's making you question your previous decisions and whether you made the right choices. And one of them was with this person, making you question whether you made the right choice when it comes to them. I do have a feeling that this connection is going to move into healing waters and that there may be an opportunity to let bygones be bygones in a helpful, peaceful, friendship kind of way. But I do want to look at the future of this connection and the extended. We're more so going to be helping you clear the present and focus on why this person is on your mind at the moment. I can tell you that the thoughts of them were always meant to expand into something more. You weren't supposed to linger and dwell on these heavy feelings. You were supposed to expand. It was a difficult test to put you under, but it was supposed to balance your mind out to help you appreciate the truth as the truth is now currently. It's like your mind gets attached to what the truth was in the past, but the situation has changed, you've grown, you've changed, and that is no longer the current truth. So let's have a look a little bit further, shall we, Spirit? Can we get some more information? Why is this person on group one's mind? Why is this person on group one's mind, Spirit? We have square, interesting. Yeah, square always makes me think of uh, a difficult union of, of pushing things together, but I also think of squares as, as things that kind of cause friction. It's not straightforward, it's not typically easy, um, but it is a working partnership. So in this case, it feels like this square is just kind of facing off to one another. I don't know if this person inspires you, but I have a feeling that they are the reason why you're wanting to be better. I have a feeling that they're the reason why, one of the reasons, let's say, why you're trying to push yourself to be better, why you're trying to push yourself to be who you are and who you want to be. Is there anything else you can tell us, Spirit, for group one? Why is this person on their mind? Group one, please, Spirit. 
We have the new moon. <laughs> okay, we have a new moon coming up as well. Um, I'm not too sure when you're going to be watching this. It is a timeless reading, but the new moon is an opportunity to start new cycles, set new intentions, and just reflect and wrap up um, where you're currently at. I usually like to do releasing and protection rituals on the full moon, but you could use a new moon as a new opportunity to really release yourself and prepare yourself for what is to come, getting ready for um, who you want to be. I honestly use new moons to set new intentions and then to affirm them and work on them over the next couple of weeks. So it feels like this connection is reaching a point where you're being granted a do-over, whatever that means for you, a blank slate altogether. But in order to get there, you have to release your heavy emotional baggage. And this person was one of those things, group one. Is there anything else you can tell group one? We have the fourth house coming up over here. So the fourth house kind of tells me that there are sentimental feelings here. There may be even feelings of nostalgia. There may be feelings of care. There may be feelings of like this was something really cozy and special and meaningful. But I can tell you with the fourth house that you are still healing and recovering and that what is going on right now with your situation in general for you um, the goal is to keep you protected and to make sure that what does enter your life currently is not going to be harmful. So if this person is not a does not play a heavy role in your present, it's probably because they are not able to contribute towards this theme that is currently playing out in your life. You're being protected like this baby in the womb here. You're in a gestational period preparing for your next journey. And I feel like anything that is going to impinge upon your growth and your healing and your readiness um, is simply not able to be a part of your present right now. So as much as this person is in your thoughts, I, I don't think they're able to be a part of your present. I'm seeing someone who needs to be separate from you, mostly because this is a personal journey of reflection and healing and growth and they can't support you in that but speaking of support we have trine so or trine it depends on how you say it i say trine personally <laughs> um which is another feeling of working together and complementing each other so in a less jarring or adjacent way as the square trine seems to be an opportunity for you to really work through this by looking outward if that makes sense it's almost like um to put it into a basic analogy being in school and there's maybe that one peer in your cohort who you feel you're on a similar level with whether you have the same athletic abilities academic abilities or you're both sort of the same um achievement status when it comes to that particular subject maybe that's what this person is for you you peer over your shoulder and you wonder where they're at and what they're up to because you feel that you are on a similar level a similar vibration and that you could be or should be achieving the same things in the same way it feels like there's a little bit of this healthy sort of competition going on where you kind of check in with each other from time to time to see how well the other one's doing and then readjust your um effort accordingly to kind of either match pace or, or su succeed where they failed. Neptune tells me there's a lot of um, sort of whimsical thoughts here to the point where some of it is fantasy suites, some of it isn't no, is no longer reality. That's why Spirit had to kind of let you think about this so heavily recently so that you could actually separate fantasy from reality. I think that your mind sometimes over-exaggerates the truth when it comes to this person or the circumstances around this person. And I do think that in this case, this recent bout of thinking about them was aimed to really clear up and, and show you um, the truth for what it is. No sort of sugarcoating, no pretending that it's better than what it is or that it's something else, an alternate reality. Spirit was like, no, we have to, we have to focus on the truth here. So bottom deck energy for you is Pisces. So there's more of that energy grounding the reality though with Pisces reverse. Pisces is also a wise energy, a very, um, intuitive energy. So I feel like it's about using your logic in order to discern what is real and what isn't 
when your um, mind gets a bit carried away sometimes. I don't mean to call you delusional too, that's not what I'm trying to say, but I do want to say that this previous, in terms of you thinking about them recently, that was really about just getting the facts out of the situation, separating your feelings and your um, imagination from what is actually happening and allowing you to make some grounding affirmations like well listen this is the truth this is what I feel this is what my intuition is picking up on but this is the truth this is the reality of the situation and it's hard to do that when you're intuitive because you pick up on energies you're empathetic you feel what somebody wants in their heart you sense what they want in their soul but reality is showing you that their vessel is only capable of doing this so it can be a very difficult process of needing to release and let go of what you feel is true in your heart because at this state in time reality is only affording you this option it's a very difficult thing to learn to do let us now see if you've been on their mind i do want to see this because i have a feeling that you kind of bounce off each other so group one please spirit have they been on this person's mind group one have they been on this person's mind the six of cups honestly yes you have this person still thinks of you in very fond ways. They still think of you as though you're a part of their present, as though you are someone who's not too far away. The Fortitude card upright, they still feel um, quite inspired by you, but it's an interesting inspired. It's not like a hopeful sort of look up at the sky and wonder if you're staring at the same moon. It's more of a like courageous um, strength or inspiring like you know how your parents or maybe not but <laughs> um there's the kind of that thing that when you're in a difficult spot someone will tell you a story or an analogy that helps you get out of that spot by likening your circumstances to a hero story you know they might say oh yeah when i was your age i did this and that, and that but i never gave up that's how this person looks at you. They look at you as a hero story. Um, they look at you as what could happen if you never give up. I see that this person does look up to you. It feels like they've gained a lot of strength from this connection. To be honest with you, this person feels like they um, do look over at you quite a lot. There's something about the future here too. Spirit, what is going on here? Does this person, the Knight of Swords, reverse now? Interesting, isn't that where it takes a turn? No action. We've got energy, we've got emotions, but we have no action. Is this person thinking about group one, please, spirit? What can you tell us? Is this person thinking about group one? The three of cups reversed. They might not be a part of your social circle anymore. They might not have a way into your social circle. This person could run with a different crowd, have a different group of friends, or just be someone who cannot be friends, especially if they were an ex-lover. Maybe like, an eye that's too complicated. I'm not going to be friends with you. Sorry. I don't mean to laugh at that, but... And they kind of feel like as much as there is respect and admiration, there's also a, a lack of present feelings in terms of being present in this moment with your feelings. This person often thinks about the memories. They often project that into their present by getting a bit nostalgic and looking at who you are now versus who you were back then the hierophant yeah they feel like they gain a lot of information from you like they gain wisdom they gain advice they gain retrospect spirit saying this person definitely learns from you i feel like they still have a lot of learning to do maybe the two of you shared a school um, period together where you were studying together or something but I don't know that that maybe that analogy of, of school being in school and having a peer that you bounced off of actually works for you but it does show me with the hierophant here that this person is currently upskilling and learning a lot from you so you are on their mind but in a very nostalgic way they don't feel active in your present they're not a part of your social circumstances and they barely have anything to contribute when it comes to um, being a physical presence in your reality. Is there anything else they need to know about this person's thoughts of them? 
This person is really finding it difficult to move forward. They are trying, they're pushing forward, they're coming out of a period of inaction. So I feel like this person spent a long time trying to think of you, maybe not think of you, heal from you is probably a better way of saying it. I feel like they spent a long time trying to heal from you. With the Four of Swords reversed, they're coming out of a period of inaction. So as nostalgic as they are and as missing as they are, I feel like this person is about to make some pretty big changes in their life because of their thoughts of you. You've inspired this person to take life seriously with the Queen of Pentacles, to make some serious investments, some serious commitments. You've inspired this person to try to be someone like you. They see you as a very masculine energy, of like an achieving energy, a balanced mind, um, clear actions careful actions you seem to be a good planner and they come across as someone who kind of stands in your shadow as a more feminine counterpart and listen i'm talking about energy here when i talk about feminine energy i'm talking about a more passive energy um an energy that feels wise but an energy that in the case of your connection is almost like feeling like they need to carve something from themselves in their own nature like they can't just do what you did. I'm hearing no one can. You're, you're, no one can do what you do. So they see you as like a one of a kind energy. And yet they also feel like they wouldn't have what they have in their life now if they weren't inspired by what you've done. A queen of pentacles. This person could have, yeah, made some material commitments lately. Really sort of invested in themselves and their reality. They might have even bought a home for some of you. Um, whatever it is, they're trying to take charge and they're trying to feel like they're in charge of their life. Temperance reverse, they're not actually, though. They're struggling to maintain this, but they're going to continue for as long as they can. Temperance reverse just tells me that this person is not able to reconcile at the moment. Their energy is a little bit all over the place, so if you were hoping for them to come back, I was kind of wondering if that was going to happen myself. I just feel like their energy is, is all over the place, especially because they're so focused on their material world. Um, it kind of feels like even if they did appear, they would not be able to give you the better part of themselves. They would give you a distracted, frazzled, fried, frustrated, um, maybe excitable and passionate, but non-present version of themselves. Spirit, can we get some channeled messages from this person, please, for group one? I nearly said two for group one. And what does this person want to say to group one, please, Spirit? My days. We have maybe in the reverse. Yeah, your person has recently gained clarity about something to do with this connection. What to this person's strength? I had a feeling that their ego was playing into this somehow. To be honest with you, this person is a little bit ego-based at the moment. They're very concerned about their appearance, their beauty, how they're perceived by others, how they're seen by you. They do compare themselves to you is what I can tell you now. With the strength card upright and my strength card reversed, this person's self-image is playing heavily in their actions. So they only do what they feel is going to make themselves look better at this moment in time. I do feel like this person is working through some sort of personal list of achievements that they've created for themselves. And they're very focused on accomplishing that. Group one, what is this person you make my heart fall. So there are fond memories of you. There are still these friendly, fond, warm memories of you, group one. What does this person want to say to group one, please, spirit? Yeah, they see you as one of a kind. You're someone who really stands out. You're someone who really does inspire them. Your achievements are second to none, is what I feel. And they really do look at you as someone who they want to embody in their own nature. We also have now is not the time. So timing seems to be an issue here. But with this card reversed, it more so feels like intentions have not been set for a time. Um, so if I, yeah, what's going on here? What do they want to say about their ability to be more present in group one's life. And it's assuming that you want them a part of your life as well. I don't even know if you want this person in your life. 
your family won't like me. It feels like this person no longer shares the same group as you or they just don't have a way in anymore. Um, there was a very material link to them spending time with you and it feels like that link has been unlinked now. So I have a feeling that this person just struggles to find a way in. I'm also getting that they're very busy and they could be working on other things with other people. Um, it does feel like for some of you, this person is more wanting an opportunity to speak to you alone with this card reversed. Um, they just need a way in, is what I feel. It's a practical issue. They might not have your phone number anymore, for example, or they just may not um, have you in the same place as they used to be. Maybe this person prefers face-to-face -face contact and they live in a different city. But I do need you to know that apparently they still feel the same way. There is a strong feeling of friendship here from their side. Whereas on your side, you feel like you've had to grieve this person and let go of them and and look at this as an unsuccessful endeavor. But on their side, they still see you as a very special friend, someone who makes them feel very happy and someone who they consider to be a source of inspiration. They feel like you're very similar and it also feels like this person is confident that if they saw you, they'd be able to em embrace you as a friend or, or at least talk to you as someone that they know quite well, which is interesting because it doesn't seem to match up with your side of the story. Is there anything else that this person wants group one to know? Yeah, they're saying don't wait for me because I do feel like this person has not set intentions on coming back yet. With this card reversed, they're very focused on self and this looks selfish, but I do think that they are in a period of growth where their material world is starting to show some really positive affirming signs of improvement because of this person's hard work. So they really are focused on themselves right now and their legacy, whatever that means. It could be more towards their career, but it does feel like they're just becoming their own sort of creator here. We also have, if I asked you to stay, would you leave? This person doesn't want you to miss out on other opportunities, especially when it comes to emotional opportunities to connect with other people. I see the Four of Cups reversed as them saying like, never say never. So honestly, this person hasn't closed the chapter in your book, but they also haven't set intentions on, on where the story leads to next. It's like they've just jumped to another chapter and they've assumed that you're going to be written in when you're meant to. This person is trying to become the main character in their story, but also they're not writing the story. They're just acting in it. They're letting the universe write themselves where they're meant to be, and they're letting the universe figure out if and when you're meant to come back in as well. So that's the best way that I could describe it. With the Three of Cups reversed, I do feel like this person is simply focused on themselves. It's not a matter of this person leaving you for somebody else, even if that is the practical case for you. It's more that this person was just thinking of what is going to make them happy as an individual, not who is better than who or where will I be able to feel more um, immediate joy. This person seems to be trying to take their life more seriously and they're trying to do it in a way where they're looking at themselves and how what they really want here. So what is the closing advice for you? Let's get some closing advice. I've been using this deck lately. What is the closing advice for group one in this situation? Trust the niggle. Yeah, you have an intuitive um, open nerve at the moment. This card is saying, what is the niggling feeling trying to tell you? All these thoughts, all these dreams, all these daydreams were supposed to help steer you in a new direction. So what is the niggling feeling trying to tell you? Pay attention to your subconscious feelings. Um, the heavier emotions are meant to be purged, not held onto. You're actually meant to let them go. Beneath those feelings are subconscious informations, um, a subconscious information that is supposed to help you understand where you're going to next, if that makes sense. You're about to start something new for yourself. Longing for home, belonging, the original light workers, Mintaken. So it does feel like this person was somewhat of a soulmate, a kindred spirit, as I like to call them now. There's a lot of debate about soulmates at the moment, and honestly, it's very intriguing. And the more you kind of read into it, the more your mind explodes. So <laughs> just a heads up. Um, but this tells me that you did feel a kindred spirit 
spiritual sort of connection to them. They felt like they were one and the same with you. And that is not something that needs to be grieved. This person is looking at you as you're still in the same reality as them. You're just not a part of their present cone of awareness. And that's actually a very beautiful way to look at people as they come and go from our cone of awareness. Even though they aren't in front of us here and now, their energy can be with us still in a helpful way. And that's how this person looks at you. I don't mean to kind of make you look at each other in a comparative way like those two peers. But I'm just saying it's a very freeing way of looking at relationships in general is that when they do go, yes, there can be a period of grieving, but we haven't truly lost them. We're just making space for something else to enter now. And who knows, in the future, maybe they will come back. I just have a feeling that you are supposed to have a longing feeling because with Mintakin, you are a very special soul with very special connections and Mentakins, if you resonate with star seeds they always have this feeling as though earth is not their home and as though they're always longing for some place to belong and always having this sort of yearning feeling for that for that sense of home so that feeling at this point in your journey is supposed to help propel you forward so really trust that feeling understand that feeling and understand how or who is not satisfying that feeling as well because you aren't supposed to dwell in it you're supposed to understand wow the situation is not satisfying me emotionally i think it's time for a change it's time to move forward it's time to find out where this longing feeling is going to take me because look at your bottom deck energy, dance with life, do something to change your energy. I do see a change in your energy coming, but it all starts with you being able to purge these heavy feelings as well. So group one, that's what I'm seeing for you in terms of why this person is on your mind. We're going to have a look at what the future of this connection is in the extended reading. I don't imagine the extended reading to be too long. I'm going to base it off the same sort of theme of getting you as much um, helpful information as possible, some guidance, and just being able to give you the closure necessary to be able to move forward. If you're interested in the extended, the link is in the description box. I just want to take a quick second, though, to thank you for all of your support right here on YouTube, thanking our spiritual teams for helping me channel these messages and for keeping me safe while doing so. I hope to connect with you very soon, Group 1. Bye! Hi group two and welcome to your reading. If you chose the Lightseer's Tarot deck here, um, then this is going to be your reading. We're asking Spirit, why is this person on your mind? I have shuffled this deck, so the card that you originally saw is not the card that I just showed to you, but this Lightseer's deck, I would have showed you the back of the deck as well to help, help you choose the right one. So group two, we're asking Spirit, why is this person on your mind? We're going to be getting advice as well. If needed, we'll get some channeled messages if it's helpful. If it's not helpful, we won't. We'll just focus on why they're on your mind and what else you need to know about the situation right now. There will be an extended reading for this YouTube reading. The extended reading will be looking at the future of your connection. So before we get there, we've got to figure out what's going on right now. <laughs> group two, please, spirit. Why is this person on group two's mind? Why is this person on group two's mind, spirit? We have the hanged man coming out for you in the reverse position. Group two, please, spirit. Why is this person? Look at all of this debris on my beige. Why is this person on group two's mind? The nine of wands, interesting. Why is this person on group three's mind? We have the death card coming out for you. This deck is doing strange things. Let me just try to shuffle it one more time. Why is this person on group three's mind, spirit? Oh, hello. <laughs> We have the devil coming out. Okay. Why is this person on group three's mind? We have the seven of wands. Why is this person on group three's mind? We have the seven of pentacles reversed. Now I'm starting to get some thoughts. What is going on here, Spirit? Why is this person on group two's mind? Did I say three? I apologize. 
Group two's mind. We have the three of cups coming out reversed. Why is this person on group two's mind? We have the ten of pentacles. Oh my days. Wow. Ten of wands is your bottom deck energy at this stage. Um, well, wow, we got a lot to go off here. I just want to drink of water because I feel like this message is going to require a lot of effort on my side. Let's have a look. Okay, I feel like there's something going on here in the sense of there needs to be action fairly soon. This person is on your mind because there does seem to be this to and fro of what am I responsible for versus what are they responsible for. With the Ten of Wands reversed, you're kind of considering like what should I do about this situation next, especially with the Knight of Cups beneath that. Do I wait? Do I do something now? Do I do I do this? Do I do that? Should I wait for them to do something? There seems to be a kind of like a, a thinking of like, well, what should I do about this next? Especially with the hanged man over here in the seven of wands. These two cards are very much about trying to work up the courage to do something, trying to work up the, what's the word? It's just like an inner battle. I'm trying to find the right way to do something, trying to find the right energy to do something. And I feel that with the hanged man reversed as well. It's like you have the idea, but we don't have the way forward yet. Either the path hasn't been cleared or our mind has not reached a point where our next actions are completely obvious. It's like we kind of know what we should do, but we don't know how to do it. We don't know if it's possible to do. This person has been on your mind as well because you may have recently realized something about them, some sort of epiphany, some information may have cleared up in your mind and made you look at the situation in a different way, group two. It also feels like this person seems to be like exciting to think about, um, but there is definitely struggles here in how to move things forward with this person. I'm trying to keep it really open, but for, I definitely feel that this could be like a, a romantic interest, but I do want to leave it open because we do have indication of friendship here as well. So I don't want to just label it. It's a general reading, but I can definitely see that the big question mark in these thoughts is, well, what should I do next versus what should I expect them to do next? Whose turn is it? What are we doing? Who's going to do what next? Those seem to be the thoughts. I think with the Nine of Wands, it's also very difficult to try to approach the situation in a way where, like, what is the right amount of energy to invest here? That's what I'm seeing with the Nine of Wands. The Nine of Wands is like a pushing feeling of needing to persevere through something, needing to really assert yourself, persevering through, like pushing your energy to get there, but it, it almost leads to burnout. And I think that the big question mark in this situation is what is worth investing based on the amount of time that I've known them? Maybe this is a fairly new person in your life or maybe the effort on their side has not been very consistent. So you're kind of like, well, what do I give then? If they're not giving me much, do I match their energy? But then we don't get what we want. I really want this, but then you know, I'm going to be putting more in than they are. There seems to be this concern over effort and how much effort to put into this connection. I also want to say that somebody could have their boundaries up and could be hard to read. So this person is on your mind because you're just kind of wondering what's going on inside their head. It could be very hard to get a clear reading on them with your intuition, trying to follow what you think, you know. Um, but still questioning whether that's actually the truth. I have a feeling with the death card here, though, the main reason that you are thinking of them is because all of this is seemingly leading to this desired transformation, um, either a rebirth or a, a brand new beginning. You know, maybe we don't need to even rebirth it. Maybe we just have to finally ground it and create a new opportunity here. I just have a feeling with the death card that in order for that to happen, something has to be purged, something has to be released. And when I say released, I don't necessarily mean like letting go of something from your past. Maybe it's just about releasing feelings, releasing thoughts, expressing yourself. 
um, really opening up and allowing this to be a new transformative opportunity, being vulnerable. A bit of Scorpio energy here. It is Scorpio season. Scorpio season. It could be an opportunity to be a bit vulnerable as well as to get some of your intimate desires met, if you know what I mean. But anyway, it's not really that kind of reading, gosh. Um, group two. The other thing about this death card is with the three of cups reversed, there is a desire to take things to a more serious level, to a more intimate level. When I see the three of cups upright, I just think of like a group of people hanging out, having fun. When it's reversed, it feels like it's more intimate. Either this is about singling out one person in particular and fostering a more intimate connection with that one person, or just trying to consider what is best for you individually, separate from the group that you share. So it does feel like things are getting more serious here. And there's this question in your thoughts um, of what it's going to lead to. I have a feeling that the Three of Cups is just about taking advantage of time together as well, away from people, um, taking serious time together. You may just be wondering what's what's going on with this person. Maybe you haven't seen them in a lot, little while as well. If you share a community with them, they might have been MIA for a little bit. You're just kind of wondering what's going on with them. Are they okay? What is these thoughts might be around that? It really feels like your thoughts on this person are trying to help you process um, the current situation and what you should slash could do next. I have a feeling with the devil card here, there's a strong attachment to them. Like your thoughts just seem to fall towards this person without really trying. There could be a bit of a guilty pleasure as well, though. <laughs> um, you know, maybe some of the thoughts you don't need to try, but I think that with other thoughts you really do try <laughs> to have them with the devil coming up here. This is an attachment to thinking about this person. This feels like you use them as a little bit of like a, a scapegoat sometimes. Like, well, this is a boring meeting. Let me just think of this person instead. This is a boring situation. Let me just think of this person instead and I feel like these thoughts are more so about like some sort of shared future here to be honest with you with the ten of pentacles this is like there's no universal meaning behind your line of thoughts when it comes to this person I mean I the thing about it is your thoughts are literally trying to help you process what you know about them and what you should do about the future that you share with them your thoughts are a reflection of what your feelings are trying to process and I think that it's very helpful right now for you to really consider what your feelings are trying to process so that you can move forward your mind is on this person because there seems to be um, this push of energy and it seems to be uncertain and there's there's barriers and there's uncertainty of like how it's going to work out but there is desire as well and the desire is all pushing for a transformative um, opportunity with this person that leads to you to hopefully have a shared future with them in a more serious way. I think with the Ten of Pentacles, there could be a family connection here as well, or it could just be that you do want to be a part of each other's future or you really want this person to be a part of your future. Um, the other thing that I'm picking up here is maybe like you do think about them and and their success and you maybe you look up to them in a certain ways as well there's just an interesting feeling here of like thinking about the future with this person but in a very like guilty pleasure kind of way because the devil makes it seem like it's something that needs to be um that is associated with a bit of shame and a bit of guilt you know, thinking of this person also makes you feel like you can't really brag about it or boast about it. Like you've got to kind of hide it sometimes, um, be a bit secretive with it. Maybe that's why the death card's here as well. Maybe this is like a secret desire that you haven't told a lot of people, a secret like escapism or a way of thinking that you have carried with you. These thoughts seem to be about unburdening yourself though and, and kind of lessening the load and trying to be more expressive and trying to be more um, understanding of, of what the tr your truth is. Like, how do I actually feel? I think you know how you feel about this person though, group two. I think you've had time to kind of figure that out. I think you're more just needing to figure out what you should do next. So let's see if they've been thinking about you as well, shall we? Are you ready? I don't think you're ready for this journey. Let's have a look. 
Group two, please, Spirit. Has this person been thinking about group two as well? The page of cups in the reverse position. Hmm. Has this person been thinking about group two as well? We have temperance now. What the heck is going on with this person? The page of cups reverse would be no, but temperance is like, yeah. <laughs> temperance is like, they're trying to say no, but yeah. What's going on here, spirit? The eight of wands, they have. What's going on here with this person? Why the page of cups reversed? The star reversed. Okay, that makes some more sense. Um, what do they think about them? Oh, excuse me? Can you be more clear? <laughs> what do they think about with group two spirit? Oh my days, stop it. The sun. Two of wands. This person does want to spend more time with you. Okay, group two. They are curious about you. They're playing it safe as, as uh, Switzerland in World War II. They really just don't want to let on. It's very um, frustrating. This person's very in control of like their physicale. They won't um, reveal the truth of what they're feeling or, or how they desire because <laughs> there's desire here. Um, the truth is they do think about you, but I have a feeling with the Page of Cups reversed that it's either very careful and controlled or it's just something that doesn't necessarily feel real yet. It's the best way that I would describe what I'm feeling. The Page of Cups with the star reversed, it's almost like this person doesn't have a lot of hope that something genuine is going to come out of the situation. So they're just kind of letting it happen as it happens, you know, not holding too many expectations. But the truth is this person feels like they kind of, and let me take this if this resonates, but there's also a feeling of like, I know you from somewhere, you know, like there's a feeling of like, this person thinking of the past and how it's come into their future all of a sudden, if that makes sense. There's something about this that feels like, wow, I can't believe it's happened like this, which is so strange. Yeah, I feel like this person is just trying to figure out what they should do because they're not entirely sure about how they feel, if I'm honest with you. This person... This person is, is still like developing um, feelings and an understanding of their feelings as well. I can see with temperance that they are really trying to balance themselves out and control the way that they express what they feel and the way that they think. Their thoughts are very balanced in general, but temperance tells me that this person is just someone who likes to live in the moment. They don't like to be too attached to things that are yet to manifest unless they are trying to manifest something specifically. And when it comes to this connection that they share with you, they're not really holding too many expectations. They're just trying to keep present and stay focused on what's in front of them. So this is someone who, if you're there, they're looking at you, they're thinking about you. If you're not there, they're looking at whatever's there and they're thinking about that. I don't mean to make them sound like a player. I'm just saying that this person's attention is very much focused on their immediate reality and what they need to, to deal with in front of their face. So I have a feeling that this person does have desires for you and I feel like there is some sort of communication coming here with the Eight of Wands. It feels like things are moving quickly. Um, I just get this impulse feeling, to be honest with you. Because of this person's in-the-moment energy, I don't think that they're going to make plans. Although the Two of Wands was kind of hinting at plans, it more so feels like they need to take advantage of the chances or opportunities that they have this person's thoughts of you um, includes something becoming more serious 
as well. They either want advice from you about this or they want to take up some sort of serious commitment towards you. Now, the thing about the Hierophant is this could also be referencing a shared institution. If you work together or study together, they could be thinking about that and being able to see you again there. But I just feel like this person just thinks about when they get to see you next. To be honest, like they don't try to dwell on any heavy thoughts. They don't try to dwell on any fantastical, whimsical, futuristic thoughts. They just wonder, like, when am I going to see them next? When, am I, when are they going to come back into my life and grace me with their light? This person finds you to be very bright and you do have their attention when you're around them. Whether they show that to you obviously or not, they really enjoy being around you and they really enjoy having your focus on them as well. I just feel like this person is very secretive when it comes to their feelings. They're looking at the situation as that person makes me happy, they bring me a lot of joy, um, they make me feel really good about myself, and they are someone that I enjoy spending time with. They're looking at this in a very like practical, um, almost like metaphysical way, not necessarily emotional yet. Um, but they're curious about how they actually feel about you. I just think that they need more time to understand that, more like, time with you to understand that. Let's get some channel messages from them, shall we? Because I think that it would be helpful in your case. I think we need to know what's going on with this person. Group two. I hurt my wrist at the gym, y'all. That's why it's taken me a while to film this reading. Oh gosh, I haven't told anybody because <laughs> if I tell people, they'll tell me not to go and I love going. So you're the first people I've told. Instead of telling the people I know, I told the whole internet. <laughs> group two, please, spirit. And what does group two's person want to say to them? What does group two... Oh, I can't even look at you right now. Yeah, this person's like, when do I get to look at you again? This person's wondering why it's so hard to talk to you as well. Um, they may have been ghosting here with the Five of Swords. Not necessarily. It could just be challenging to actually talk to each other. But they're definitely wondering when they get to see you next. The Five of Swords to me is like an unfortunate social situation um, in the sense of like... Not everybody gets to say what they want to say because the circumstances don't allow it. It's kind of like a Zoom meeting, you know, and the teachers muted everybody except the speaker. But y'all sitting there like, this kid is talking trash. <laughs> um, that was a very specific analogy, but that's what it feels like. They feel muted. Um, they feel like they can't really, they don't get the chance, the opportunity to talk to you in the way that they want to. What is going on here, Spirit? What does this person want to say to group two? What does this person want to say to group this to this? Oh my days, excuse me. How do we go from that to this? I want to start a family with you, the Ten of Pentacles. To be honest with you, it is already here. This person has considered a future with you and with the Hierophant here, I'm not surprised. They feel like they think about their future, but it's in a very practical way. Like they look at how you make them feel right now and the fact that they would want to feel like that for the rest of their lives. You know, that's how they think about it. Group two. What does this person want to say to group two? I lie awake thinking about our future. With that card reversed, that's telling me that this person isn't just thinking. They're wanting action. There, yeah, look at this. They're wanting action. They're wanting action. It's not all thoughts anymore. This person wants action. Take me seriously, I heard. That could be why the page of cups is reversed as well. Take me seriously. See me for what I am. There could be an age difference here. Someone could be younger than the other person, feeling like they're kind of at a disadvantage because of that as well, feeling like they don't really stand a chance, but wanting it to happen anyway. Why is the star reversed? Yeah. This doesn't feel real and they don't know if it can be. They're trying not to hold too many expectations because it feels like a fantasy. You're almost like a dream come true to this person. They wish upon a star, but that's what you are. You're just a wish. They don't really understand it being real. So there's desires to try because like you can only wish for so long before the opportunity passes. 
And I feel like this person just wants to know now. Group two, obviously take that if it resonates. Action is not going to apply to all of you. They are waiting for you. I feel like this person wants to see you again. Group two, what does this person want to say to group two, spirit? They're waiting for a sign from you, maybe, that you're interested in the way that they are. Reach out reversed. Interesting. Communication is difficult with this person, sweets. What's going on with the communication spirit? Definitely. <laughs> They're like, yeah, it's definitely difficult. You guys aren't as connected communicatively as you could be. Um, maybe this is the kind of person that wants to see you face to face, or maybe you don't have each other's phone numbers. Whatever it is, it's it's not straightforward here to talk to you. It's quite difficult. It's like they have to go through someone else or something else. I gotta go to work to see you. I gotta go to school to see you. I gotta go to that shared group situation to see you. And that's annoying, but I'm open to compromise. At the very least, this person just wants to get to know you better. They wanna build a strong friendship with you, but it's not going to stay friends for long for those who resonate with this being a romantic situation. Um, I just see that this is someone that wants to get to know you better, wants to meet you halfway here. This is honestly manifesting as somebody who is very balanced with their emotions as well. So is there anything else they want to say to group two before we move forward? Oh my days. Yeah, you do give them confidence issues. We know that. But more so, they're just intimidated by the way that the situation is working out. They, it feels very like it could blow them away. So they try not to think too much about that. They try to just, when I'm here, I'm here. You know, when I'm not here, I can't afford to get carried away because it's too scary how, how intense this feels. To be honest with you, y'all both feel in the devil. You make me want to do bad things. There is a strong attraction to each other at the moment in terms of your energy is just pulling each other together. You may have good chemistry with this person as well, but they just feel very drawn to you right now. You make me want to do bad things implies some sort of physical blockage. Um, so it could be like a bit of a taboo situation. It could be like a, you know, professor and uni student situation, or it could be that age gap feeling, you know, like, oh, I don't want to go down that road. Like, it's not supposed to be illegal, you guys. I'm not talking about anything illegal here. But um, it does feel like there's some sort of barrier that needs to be overcome in order for this to work. <laughs> Look at this. The desire. I mean, you still think this is just a friend? <laughs> it's up to you. It's up to you. That could be the barrier. Your family won't like me. It feels like it's hard to get you alone, group two. This is my three of pentacles. So the three of pentacles often insinuates admirers and like people working together on a shared project or towards a shared um, outcome. But it can often mean that that situation involves two, a lot of people and maybe, you know, two people just want to work together. Maybe two people just want to be alone together and the third person kind of feels like a third wheel. It's like too much effort, too many eyes, um, too many interferences. So that's how they could be feeling. Let's have a look at the advice now, shall we? Can we get some advice, please, for these beautiful souls? Group two. What's the advice for group two in this situation, spirit? What is the advice? Oh, I knew this was going to come out for you. What is the advice for group two in this situation, spirit? Ah. We have Sagittarius as your bottom deck energy. Sagittarius season is fast approaching, but we've just really been able to breathe in Scorpio. So I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but your advice is to let things happen as they happen, to be more present with the situation, to let it unfold, to be a little bit like this person is, to take advantage of the opportunities that are in front of you and to not wait until tomorrow. There is a feeling as though this, this situation is something that is requiring you to trust the process, okay? Especially with 11 here. 11 was shown on the 10 of Pentacles. That's how I knew it was going to come out again for you. It's very significant. It means that everything is aligned here. Um, it's like a connection between the, the physical, the spiritual, the collective, um, your logical, everything. If you have a look at this card, they talk about it on the card as well. There's victory, understanding, Saturn, Mercury, 
Oh, that's strength and mercy, mercy, excuse me. But the planets are on here as well. Knowledge, beauty, wisdom, splendor, foundation, kingdom. So I have a feeling that you're being called to really trust the process here. If the situation is slowed down due to external circumstances, just trust that that is how it's supposed to be. If it's slowed down because you haven't been able to spend time together, trust that that's how it's supposed to be. And when given the opportunity to come together again, take advantage of that moment to really get, um, use your energy to get what you want out of that situation. You know, like I feel like Sagittarius is just saying, shoot your shot when the shot is given. When you have a clear, a clear view of, of where you what you want, make sure you shoot your shot. Take advantage of what is in front of you. Virgo is interesting though. Virgo is saying that in the meantime, I do think that it would be helpful to just think about how this is playing out. I know that it's very easy to overthink a situation. And to get sort of feel like you're in the deep end sometimes, but Virgo is asking for helpful reflection and contemplation. And just like to think of the situation in a very um, introspective way, how this has worked out for you. It makes me think that there's something here that you're missing. And it makes me think that we do need to take more personal accountability. I know that you wanted to kind of offload some of this burden and to let go of the responsibility. But Virgo is actually asking for you to put yourself back in this picture, for you not to get carried away with the fantasies and the daydreams, but to actually think of this person in a more practical, realistic way of what is and what isn't achievable. Putting yourself back in the story as the main character. What would the main character do next? What should the main character do next? I think that's what I'm seeing for you, group two. I'm going to leave it there. We're going to go into the extended now and have a look at the future of this connection, see what's going on there. I don't think the extended will be as long as your YouTube reading. You can um, check the link in the description box just to see how long it goes for. But I do aim to get you as much clear, precise information as possible um, in the extended. So if you would like to join me there, link is in the description box. Now, I just want to thank you guys for being here before you go. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all of your support on YouTube, on Instagram, wherever the heck you follow me to. I really appreciate exchanging energy with you and your presence does not go unnoticed. And thank you so much for all of your support. I just want to thank our spiritual teams as well before I wrap up this reading for helping me channel these messages and also for keeping me safe while doing so. I shall connect with you very, very soon. Bye. Hi group three and welcome. If you chose the true black deck from the first part of this reading in terms of the pick a group section, then this is going to be your reading. Welcome group three. We're asking a spirit today, why is this person on your mind? And Scorpio season is when I'm filming this reading. So how, how fitting that we have a black deck. I just thought, anyway, <laughs> I just thought it would be very, um, on theme if we use this black deck. So <laughs> welcome group three. We're going to get straight into it. We're focusing on why are you, is your mind stuck on this person? Why are you thinking of this person? Why is this person on your mind? We will also get advice and if helpful, excuse me, he's being so needy. If helpful, we will also get channeled messages as well. Only if it's helpful, though. Heads up, the other two groups did get it, so I have a feeling it's going to be necessary in your reading. There will be an extended reading today as well. The extended reading will be linked in the description box just above the timestamps if you want to access them after the reading. The extended will be looking at the future of this connection. And if anything else prominently pops up, as in it's unresolved in this portion of your reading, then I'm going to address that in the extended as well. Group three, please, Spirit. Let's get some crystals in here, hey? Group three, why is this person on group three's mind, Spirit? Why is this person on group three's mind? We have the three of cups in the reverse position. I'm hearing reunion. Okay, reunion. Why is this person on group three's mind? We also have the queen of swords showing up in the reverse. To be honest with you, the queen of swords has been coming through a lot, excuse me, a lot lately. What's going on with my speech? Every time I channel, I just get gassy. It's crazy. Um, 
It's been coming through a lot lately, the Queen of Swords, at least for me. I don't know about other people, but we have the Six of Pentacles coming out now as well. I've got to hold it on an angle towards the light so you can see, but this is the Six of Pentacles. Why is this person on Group Three's mind? We have the Five of Swords coming out for you as well. Oh, wow. Can I please clarify the Three of Cups reverse? All your cards are reverse, Group Three. I shuffled this deck extensively before filming, so it's just bizarre to me. We have the Eight of Wands in the reverse position now. Why is this person in group three's mind? We have the hermit now. Wow. Why is this person on group three's mind spirit? We also have the judgment card. Why is this person on group three's mind spirit? Lastly, we have the chariot in the reverse position. To be honest with you, there seems to be a lot of thinking and a lot of thoughts around how and when you're going to be able to see this person again, or if you're going to see this person again. For some of you, this is someone that you don't want to see again, but for others of you, there are. this is somebody that you want to see again. So for the whole group here, there's just, that seems to be the question mark is reunion. When can I get to see them again? When can I get to see them again? In my hands, I hold the eight of swords. So spirit is saying that this situation is definitely something that feels hopeless or that something that you feel helpless in. That's probably a better way of putting it. Something that you feel helpless in. Spirit is saying that this situation is turning into a bit of a martyr situation where your thoughts are actually starting to hurt you for no reason. You don't need to go down these dark roads anymore. Um, in fact, for all of you, the message with this card is that you should find a helpful ways to distract you from these heavy thoughts because I have a feeling, Sweet Pea, that you're making this out to be harsher than what reality is. I have a feeling that your wonderful, beautiful, fantastical mind is taking you down some very dark roads that aren't necessarily true. I have a feeling that the truth of the situation is um, you're very focused on, on the bad when the bad hasn't even yet become reality. So it's really important that you try to distract yourself when these thoughts become consuming because I do have a feeling that it's not as bad as what it seems in your mind. Whether you want to see this person again or not, um, the worst case scenario is, is only real in your mind at this stage. It, it's not something that can actually harm you as much as the thought of it is. So your bottom deck energy is a Nant. This is a special card that comes with this deck. And thank you so much to the person who gifted this deck to me. I honestly don't use it enough. I love this deck so much. It's something that has a bit of mystery behind it as well, in my opinion. The black, I'm very like a symbolic person. The black just seems to offer a lot of depth to the readings. But Anant is an extra card in this deck. And for me, it's like the card of Genesis, the card of beginnings, conception, the, the beginning. Like this is a fetus and there's this snake around it. And the snake is symbolic in many like old school and when I say old, I mean like ancient civilization. I'm thinking of like the snake on um, that eats itself, you know, and it represents the circle of life. So I just feel like what's going on here in this connection, your thoughts of them seem to be about a beginning or a genesis moment, a new beginning in general. You may have found yourself recently starting new cycles. Again, this is a timeless reading, but Scorpio season often can instigate a lot of new while also forcing us to face the old and close the old in sometimes very harsh ways or sometimes just simply helpful ways. So I have a feeling that what's going on with you, group three, is you seem to be starting new cycles and in the process of your beginnings or in the process of this change in general, thoughts are going towards worst case scenarios and just wanting to cover all bases. I want to start over here for you with the Three of Cups reversed and the Eight of Wands. These two cards tell me that you're thinking of this person because to be honest with you, something did not resolve the last time you saw them. With the Eight of Wands, 
reversed. There's a lot of energy that is yet to be grounded here. There could be anxiety, but there seems to be some frustration and just like a little bit of um, flightiness. Like there's just energy in the air and it's unsettling. It's like falling on a roller coaster and you never actually hit the ground you know you're just falling that's what it feels like to me and with the three of cups that the first thing I heard was reunion three of cups for me is a very social card of like a small intimate group of people getting together with that reversed there could be concerns about that happening there could also be concerns about how that will happen maybe there's desire to be closer than just this group of people maybe you just want to be alone with one specific person or maybe you're afraid of being alone with that one specific person but reunion seems to be something that's almost at the root of of these thoughts and spirit saying Honestly, your thoughts are helping you sort of process all of this, as well as helping you understand what emotions have control over you right now, whether they are emotions of devotion and infatuation, or whether they're emotions of fear and heavy um, resentment, because I don't necessarily get resentment, I just get fear on one side of the spectrum here. The Queen of Swords reversed is like you're going over the same information over and over again, but you can't seem to grasp the concept yet. And the thing about you in this situation is that you actually have a brilliant mind, sweets. The Queen of Swords is saying you're definitely intelligent enough, wise enough, smart enough, witty enough to be able to grasp this. But for some reason, you keep asking for the same textbook material. You keep picking up the same topics with the picker groups readings, or you keep asking the same questions or you keep researching the same thing or you keep stalking the same Facebook profile you keep getting the same information and spirits like listen you know you're smart enough you're wise enough to understand the reality of the situation at this time but you have to appreciate as well that some information is not available to you yet because it has not necessarily be needed to be available to you yet it's almost like you're trying to reach for answers that are starting to become very very minuscule in their impact to the situation it makes me think of like asking what is going to happen if xyz abc happens and the chances of xyz abc happening are probably like five percent but you still want to know you know, so it seems like you're taking on too much information while also struggling to focus on the bare facts of the reality of the situation. With the hermit here, this is still a helpful process. It's just not supposed to be blown out of proportion. Hermit is saying that it's time to ground these thoughts and to use your wisdom to really navigate these thoughts in a helpful way. I can see with the Hermit Upright that there is wisdom to be gained from this experience. In fact, there's a lot to learn from yourself from this experience. And at this stage, it's going to be most helpful for you, Group 3, to only seek clarity within. It's time to cut off external points here because you've gotten as much external information as you need there's put no more that you could possibly get from this situation in a helpful way it's time to take what you have to reflect and to really digest that information they really want you to understand what emotions have control over you because that seems to be the root of the anxiousness and hopelessness and helplessness that seems to be consuming you, especially if you've been losing sleep over this, sweets. It's really about helpfully distracting yourself and trying to only focus on the situation in a helpful way. I know that's easier said than done. We can't always control the thoughts that come to our mind, but we can control which ones we choose to feed energy and intention into. And I feel like that's a message that I've been saying a lot lately, so I'm going to keep moving forward. We have the Six of Pentacles over here in the reverse, as well as the Judgment card upright. Now, Judgment is kind of playing into this overall Uranus energy of like a reinvention of like future prospects of an awakening, some sort of very obvious information coming our way and trying to alert us to the truth of, of how the situation has happened and will happen. But the thing about the Six of Pentacles reversed is it still feels like an unfair situation for you. It feels like you know something or something has been divulged to you in a very almost dramatic way, but you feel like you're in an unfair situation because either actions haven't been balanced 
or timing has just not aligned in a helpful way. You always seem to run out of time or you don't seem to have enough time to do this or you don't seem to have the right resources to be able to manage the situation. Whatever it is, it feels like an unfair situation. Someone feels like they're being selfish almost and the other one feels like they're just not getting what they want. Now, what I can tell you with the Six of Pentacles reversed is you seem to be on borrowed time in terms of an old way of thinking. And it's really important now that you look at the situation in a new way and that you, if you aren't getting the outcome that you want, you try to look at other ways to resolve this situation for yourself. I think with the Six of Pentacles reversed, it literally feels like you're on borrowed time, like you... It feels like a, a loan and it's about repaying that time to ourselves. But it's like you've, you've almost over, over lended yourself time towards a thought that is, isn't even supposed to take up that much room. Like if you could appreciate thoughts as um, things that we buy and somebody kind of sits there and, and manages it all, you've spent so much money on this one thought that you're actually in debt to it now. And I think that moving forward, we have to reconsider how we do this because one, it's not efficient. Uh, we're running out of resources. And also, I don't think we're actually getting anywhere. I think that we need to reinvent the way that we see this situation and the way that we approach this situation in order to move forward. And I do see that happening with the judgment card. It's not just about an idea. It's also about action. So I do see the opportunity to reinvent the self, this situation based on how we choose to act upon it and feed energy towards it. Um, but in order to get there, we have to look at what hasn't been working. And I think that with the five of swords here, there is overall a lot of like unresolved things in this situation, unresolved energy. Um, and the five of swords is like a change in communication. Spirit's almost saying you guys have to decide whether or not moving forward, you want to change your communication style in this situation to better achieve the outcome that you want. With the chariot reversed, I'm getting that small group of you again that does not want a future. With this person, you're very concerned about them popping up again. But for those of you who do want a future with this person, you have to overcome your fears when talking with them. You have to overcome that rising feeling of rejection or um, embarrassment or failure, whatever it is here. Chariot Reverse tells me your fears are out, are overcoming your um, desire to actually be successful here, which is very frustrating I feel for you because afterwards you overthink everything it's like why did I do that why didn't I do that why did I do that why did it have to happen like this why didn't I do that at that time the five of swords reversed is almost like somebody choosing not to say anything because it's easier than saying something um, it's just really jarred disconnected group almost communication it's like getting information through a third person but also wanting to speak to that person directly it's almost like triangulation in my mind is what I'm seeing now I don't see it as manipulative tactic um, take it as it resonates but it just feels like say there's three people these two are talking but this one asks the question you know, and this one's just having to listen to the other person's conversation and pick up the information in that way. And then these, this one answers that person by talking to that one directly. And this one just has to listen. That's what it feels like. It's like, it feels like it's very not working <laughs> is the best way that I can say it. So let's have a look um, at what's going on on the other side of the fence, shall we, Spirit? Is this person thinking of group three as well? Is this person thinking of group three as well, Spirit? <laughs> Queen of Wands. Yeah, they are, they are, they are. It's, um, let's get more cards out. Is this person thinking of group three as well, spirit? We have the sun reversed. Goodness me, what happened, y'all? What happened? Is this person thinking of group three as well, spirit? What are they thinking about? We have the devil reversed. Goodness. 
Devil's very interesting in this deck. Have a look at that. No face. Oh, actually, a lot of them don't have faces, though. Um, we have the page of coins now in the reverse position. Hmm. Wow. You know what I'm hearing? Who sang that song? If you're a millennial, you'll know it. Oh, maybe you won't, actually. Maybe it was only famous in Australia. But anyway, it's that song that goes, Am I not pretty enough? Oh. Da -da 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 -da. Goodness me. Honestly, the page of coins reversed is a feeling of, like, unworthiness. It's almost like uh, how I can't, I can't get this. I can't get this. And it feels like this page has actually evolved. Like, it feels like this page isn't as naive or young or inexperienced as they look. Um, but there's something about this person's character when it comes to you and their thoughts of you that makes them question their worth and whether they are enough. I also want to say that this person is trying not to be obsessed or too attached to you. With the devil reverse, they're trying to either create a healthier attachment style in terms of they're trying not to overthink and obsess about you, or they're just trying to detach from you altogether. And if you have had a obvious separation from this person in the sense of y'all don't want a bar of each other and you've made that clear, then obviously it's going to be that this person does not want to be attached to you anymore. But if this is someone who you just left uncertain terms with, you don't really know, like it's something that maybe grew and then it just stopped, it didn't grow much further, then I can see that this person is just trying not to get, become too attached um, because they really just don't know what's going to happen in the future. They're really trying not to put all their eggs in this fragile basket only because they're afraid that this basket isn't even going to be carried by you in the first place. This person with the sun reversed, their thoughts of you are very pessimistic at this moment in time. They, they're finding that the window of hope and opportunity is closing on their side. So it feels like this person is someone who is tr someone who is trying to like get a majority of their happiness and their intention and their just movement from themselves like they're very focused on self here with the sun reverse they're like if they want something done they do it for themselves if they want something done a certain way they do it for themselves they're not really expecting you to do that at this stage they don't really see you as someone who would do that at this stage they don't hold a lot of hope for this connection because of the past that has presented itself thus far. I can see with the Queen of Wands upright though that this person does still think about you. Their energy is still headed your way and moving in your way in the sense of they do put their own needs first and consider themselves to want to be responsible for their own whatever it is. But it feels like with you they do like your attention and they do like the way that you make them feel. I have, I look at how I'm talking. It's like, I don't know if this person's really thought very deeply about that though. I don't know if they really understand how you make them feel or, or what this situation means to them because I'm talking about this in a very cold way, almost with an attitude. So I don't know if just this person is a bit afraid of things not going out working out well in their favor so they've had to put like an emotional barrier up and just be very careful about how they move forward but it just feels like defensive is the word that I would put it and the queen of wands is a very attractive person but it's getting it's giving me hyper independence vibes you know it's giving me I have to look after myself because nobody else will I have to take care of myself because at the end of the day other people only hurt me I like this person's attention but they're just going to leave me like everybody else that's what it feels like it's giving me like defensive hyper independence vibes is there anything else that group three needs to know about this person's thoughts of them We have the queen of, excuse me, are you coins? You are. The queen of coins in the reverse position. We've got another snake on here. The symbolism on this deck is incredible. It's very subtle at first, but there's a lot of hidden um, symbols and meanings. So we got a snake on here, and we also have what appears to be like a bird. It kind of looks like a hummingbird, but it's so big. Like, what is that? Anyway, let me hold it this way so you can actually see it. What is that? I know I'm shaking a lot. I just woke up. <laughs> Um, hmm. 
Goodness me, group three. Hey, that was reversed. Pardon me. Yeah, wow, that, that fits the theme. That fits the theme more. Yeah, there's like this hyper-independence. I gotta look after myself. Not nobody else will. And listen, this person isn't No, they are. They may be. They haven't been given a reason not to. They're projecting their previous insecurities onto this relationship because it still hasn't quite revealed its true colors yet. They don't really know what to make out of the situation. They don't know how helpful this relationship is in their present because I, either there's not a lot going on, it's just thoughts, or um, the past was just very messy here. If this is somebody very new, they just don't have enough information to go off to decide whether you're going to be a helpful or a harmful person in their present. But if you do have a very extensive history with this person, then they are protecting themselves from you. They like your attention, but they hold you like this away from them because they don't want you to hurt them. Your bottom deck energy is the king of cups reverse. So this person's emotions are very coveted at this stage. They're very careful, almost manipulative. I think they care more than they would care to um, in the sense of they're trying to detach. They're trying to be emotionless, but there's actually a lot going on under the surface. In fact, the king of cups is like a Scorpio energy. So just know that there's a lot going on behind closed doors with this person. Your reading is all about bringing the subconscious to the conscious so that you can be aware of how your emotions have control over you. Your thoughts are trying to help you process this situation so that it's no longer got such a heavy bind over you and so that you understand what action to take to get the outcome that you want. Let's get some channeled messages from this person now to paint a better picture of where they're at because that should help you understand what you need to do. Okay, spirit. What does group three's person want to say to them? What does group three's person want to say to them, spirit? What does group three's person want to say to them? Oh. Excuse me? We have sex with you coming out. This is my six of wands in the reverse position. What does group three's person want to say to them, spirit? Wow, we have the three of swords coming out. I think we should see other people. I'm hearing that song. I'm only gonna break, break your, break, break your heart. Oh my days. What's going on here? We have yes coming out. The sun again. But it's up this time. The sun's up. It's not going down. We have na yeah. So that's a weird twist of events. We have the Ace of Swords in the reverse position. What's going on here with the Three of Swords, Spirit? No. Wow. We have yes and no coming out. That hardly ever happens. I just want space. It's my Six of Swords. What does this person want them to know? I'm absolutely in love with you. Six of Cups. What do they want, group? Wrongful advice. <laughs> wow. Now is not the time. I heard that part. I don't know. I've been watching a lot of Instagram lately, especially when I'm at the gym and I seem to always be there. So I'm hearing that song. Let's skip to the good part. Dun, 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 dun. Your bottom deck energy is reach out. Reach out for me is actually the ace of wands more than anything in your reading. I don't know if there needs to be a rebirth because maybe it didn't work out the first time around, but regardless, I want you to know that this person has very mixed thoughts when it comes to you, mixed feelings. Whatever happened here, there's not enough information for them to make a definite decision on how they think about you. So they are keeping an open mind. They are still healing something as well. This Three of Swords, it's not necessarily about you, Group 3, unless you've had a clear breakup with this person. If you haven't had a breakup with them, they are separating their energy from someone else. They're overcoming an emotional um, a heavy emotion from their past and it's leading to confidence issues. You are indirectly triggering this person's confidence because it reminds them of a previous situation that broke their heart or that was really difficult for them to get over. This person's mind is expanding towards you and they're starting to really like you, if I'm honest. If you if you haven't had a breakup with this person, they're looking at you at, with a lot of hope. I know I was saying that they're not down here because the truth is they flip. 
It's like, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Some days they feel really good. And then if, if not much happens, then they start to slip and they're like, listen, I can't get too attached yet. So just know that this person hasn't completely made up their mind yet in terms of what they think. They need more material to go off. It's kind of like somebody telling you, okay, are you going to get on train A or train B? And this person's like, well, well where's train A going? Where's train B going? And the ticket master's like, oh, you, you don't know that yet. You've got to wait. So this person's like, all right, I'll wait then. They're just waiting to see where your train goes, where your train leads. They need more information. This person is very undecided. And honestly, a little bit confused, but only logically. They are working on keeping an open heart space towards you. They're working on healing themselves. They're working on maintaining a very high vibration. And that's why they've had to detach and not let themselves get too obsessed with you too soon. I also need you to know that this person does regret their actions towards you. They feel like something could have been handled better with wrongful advice here. This person may have listened to the wrong advice when it comes to your situation situation or they could just have made mistakes in the past and they're concerned about that playing out in this current situation with you as well but know that they are focused on healing they're moving into a more peaceful period of their life in general and this is somebody who still doesn't really know what to think about you but you have triggered confidence issues within them and you have made them question um, whether this is going to be a helpful or a harmful situation. So we're getting that message back again. There are feelings developing for you, though, if this is a newer person or if this is someone who you haven't had a breakup with. If you have broken up with this person, just know that they're definitely healing from you and they are trying to hold, like, happy thoughts for you. Um, regardless of which side of the fence you fall on, this person really appreciates your presence in their life at this current moment in time. For some of you, they want to give you something. And I'm getting with the Six of Cups that they do really feel, Group 3, like you have something here to work with. Like there is a um, feeling of recognition, like they know you from somewhere. You instigate feelings of nostalgia in a good way. You have a very healing presence in this person's life in general. So you've helped this person heal an old cycle in their life already. And even if you haven't even been in communication with them, the thoughts of you and the presence of you has helped. So let us get some advice for you. Group three, please, spirit. What is the advice for group three in this situation? We have grand cross in a reverse position. What is the advice? We have Taurus. Wow. I might just get one more card. No. Should I? No. Bottom deck energy is four. Okay, let's go over here then. Group three. What is the advice for group three, please, Spirit? Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> we have we have the grandmother of Jesus coming out. Um seeding the light, laying foundations, divine plan. I always love it when Anna comes out because there's just this beautiful energy around her. We also have mirror, who or what is triggering you? Goodness me, those thoughts, those heavy thoughts, those fears. We also have star seed. what lights you up. Your know, spirit is encouraging you to look at the situation more um, balanced, if that makes sense, because there is fear here. There's, there's um, a need to have courage to overcome your fears in order to really understand the, the deeper feelings, the, the real feelings, because fears might be masking something else here as well. Anyway, let's get into your advice. Well, to be honest with you, I've got to clarify Grand Cross because I'm still getting my head around astrology, and Grand Cross is one of those aspects that I'm still not 100% familiar with. So I want to make sure I'm giving you the right information. Challenge, blockage, conflict, crisis, force. Grand, fro Grand Frost, oh my days. Grand Cross is a complicated energetic burden to bear, but can give rise to great fears of growth and transformation in the lifetime of the native. Interesting. In light, the Grand Cross pushes us to alchemize our pain into glory, giving a nature that seeks out a challenge and hopes to conquer it. In shadow, and technically I'm reading this in the shadow in terms of it's reversed, this aspect pattern is trying, complicated, and can be restrictive. 
the native can feel exhausted by life's continual struggles. A strong resolve to rise to the very occasion of their own life is needed here. So this is a really trying situation on you personally, Group 3. Whoever's sitting here listening to this reading, it is a complicated situation that is asking for you to rise to the occasion of your own life. What that means in my interpretation is that this is something that is not just going to happen for you. You need to make it happen for you. You may be dealing with restrictions. It may be very difficult to get what you want handed to you in a neatly wrapped present. So you're going to need to make the effort here to really use what you do have, the limited resources you do have, to get the outcome that you want. I see that, listen, there seems to be reward on the other side of this because Taurus is a very... Um, loving energy that, in my opinion, balances out whatever effort you put in. Not in the way that Saturn would. Saturn would kind of, and Capricorn would tell you, like, you got to stay back late, three days this week, work the public holiday, miss Christmas, and then you'll get that promotion. Taurus is like, if you just make the time to invest, if you just incorporate this in your routine once a day, if you just make that effort, I, I will make sure that we got you. We will have you. We'll have your salary paid. We'll, we'll make sure that you've you've taken care of. Basically, there's a really compassionate energy here when it comes to the situation. And spirit is saying, really stay open hearted here. They want you to remain open hearted, and they want you to consider how your time needs to be better managed here, whether it's managing those thoughts better, managing your efforts better to get the outcome that you want, or just really considering helpful distractions to get your mind off the negative thinking. I have a feeling with Anna coming out that there is this master divine plan that is not your concern. You don't need to worry about the bigger image, but you do need to appreciate that you're taken care of. When Anna, grandmother of Jesus, comes out, it tells me that you have a whole crew of people in the spiritual world that is protecting you and helping you navigate the situation and they want you to do it with ease they don't want all of this mental conflict and turmoil they want you to feel victorious they want to help you get through this situation so I have a feeling that it's all about getting the foundations down on your side for this new beginning remember you did have Anant this genesis moment for you laying the foundations putting the effort in to get the foundations laid and know that then things will start to move forward a bit easier but there is this feeling of needing to overcome that complicated restrictive feeling by really making the most out of what you have when it comes to resources whether you're running on limited amount of time limited amount of effort limited amount of thoughts you've just got to take what you've got and make the most out of it with Mary here there is a feeling as though your thoughts are being reflected back to you so it's important that you understand what is helpful and what is unhelpful when it comes to your thought patterns there is deeper feelings beneath those initial thoughts or those surface level thoughts so really delve deeper and get to the root of the cause here I have a feeling that what you think is the issue is not actually the issue there's a deeper issue here and maybe this person's presence has triggered something else within you an insecurity from another situation or in another circumstance that isn't necessarily um, needing to be placed over this person's head. You're both feeling a little bit concerned about how the other person sees you and this person especially feels like they lack confidence or worth to be able to really move towards you right now so just know that you're both dealing with your own forms of insecurity on either side of the fence. That is what I'm seeing for you, Grupus Thripus. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate your energy. I hope I was able to offer you information that was helpful. Um, remember that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates. Don't force anything to fit. And worst of all, don't let it take from you. I'm going to go into the extended now, where we'll be looking at the future of this connection. The extended readings have been fairly brief, just like a um, 20 minute, 23, 24, 25 minute reading. And um, just getting very straight to the point messages of what is the future of this connection. I did get more channeled messages for group one and two. So I may get that for you again, if that's helpful. And we'll just get some more advice as well to close the extended reading. So if you're interested, the link to the extended is in the description box. I just want to thank you again for joining me here. Thank you for all of your support. If you enjoyed this reading, please give it a like. 
and do subscribe for more. I will be putting out more content very soon, more information very soon, actually. I just want to take a quick second before y'all leave to thank our spiritual teams, ancestors, and guides for helping me channel these messages and for keeping me safe while doing so. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't wait to connect with you again soon. Bye, Group 3.